prep this haircut was um, section it off, obviously. So I sectioned it um, a little bit deeper on the side. So what I want you guys to realize is that sectioning is so important. You don't just take a section and then just start shaving it up. The way that you'll know that this haircut wasn't professionally done is basically based on how the sectioning played out in the haircut. How it kind of dips a little bit. It's got shagginess throughout the sides, but then it dips in a little bit lower. So I dip my section in. I probably could have even went a little bit more just to have a little bit of that length because I'm going to go in and clipper this here and take it real short so that hair is all going to fall over it. So that's what I want to be aware of as I'm working through the sectioning. Also notice, uh, and this is the one thing I want to really be aware of as I'm clippering, is that in the back of the image, the, the picture that you're seeing on the screen, there is quite a bit of length that comes down in the back as well. I didn't section away this for the length. I sectioned this away to have a point to bring everything back. I'm still going to build some length in my undercut because what I want to do is I want to do a similar version of this haircut, but I want to do my version of it, which would be a little more salon friendly. So a little bit more uh, scooping with the clipper to build a little bit of extra weight back here in the back. That's not so disconnect because some people will like the disconnection. Some people won't. If you wanted to do more or disconnection, I would just take this V and come back a little bit stronger. So a little bit more towards occipital bone here. And then that would wrap this hair in, shave underneath. And then you've got, you know, that overlay that happened. Definitely there's some options to to make it a little bit more like the image. But for me, I want to do my version of it, which is going to be a little subtler uh, as we work through it. How we're going to do this cut with clippers. So I've got my babyless clipper. I love this clipper. Uh, this is basically the one that I use in the salon all the time. I also uh, will occasionally use this Andis cordless clipper as well. I like cordless clippers. Um, but today I'm going to go with the babyless. I like that it has the click motion that can allow me to kind of shift up and down in specific amounts. So let's say that I clipper something fully open, right? Let me go to this side. So let's say I clipper something fully open, which is the blade is as long as it can be. And I think that's the right terminology. I clipper it through like this, right? And then I just want to go a tiny bit shorter. I just click it to the next movement and then I can click it to the next. And then I know that I'm two clicks away from open when I get to a certain area. So that kind of helps me out as I'm clippering the haircut. So today we're going to start off. I'm going to use a three guard because because I want to take the length off. She's got a lot of hair here. So I'll take the, the three guard, clip that on, and I'm gonna go fully open, so at the longest point. So you see how that brings it in. That brings it closer to the blade. That's gonna cut it shorter. I go out, brings it longer. So that's gonna cut the hair a little bit longer. Is I'm gonna hold the hair in my hand a little bit just to start working this hair off. So I turn the clipper on, and I'm going to come up underneath, and I'm gonna go at an angle and then rock the clipper out as I get towards this parting. Here we go, we go in, I come up, and then as I get to that top, I'm just gonna pull out, pull out. The so same thing, and I'll just kind of work through this pretty quick. So imagine going through here, imagine that you're drawing a line that's gonna go straight up to the seal. So again, clipper in, Straight up like that. So I'll hold the hair, same thing, come up and out. That part of the clipper is good. This was our three guard right here. Now I'm going to switch to a one and a half. This is how I do it. Now I'm not a barber guy. This is just my preference to the way that I like to work. So I'm gonna go a step and a half down from the three guard and I'm just gonna work this perimeter line and then I'll blend the two. I don't really go, if I was doing a tight fade, I would obviously do it a little bit different but I'm gonna follow this weight line all the way around using this guard and then I'll see that little step that's about to happen around the ear, up here, following around the ear. So now we basically got the sort of shape that we're going for. So now I'm gonna go in and do a little scissor over comb work. I'm gonna use my blacksmith fit Mizutani scissor. This was a custom one done in gold for us. It has the old, old school free salon education logo. It's a six and a half inch scissor. I like that for scissor over comb. And if
Here is a clipper, it works the same way as scissor over comb. You've got your comb here, it pulls the hair into the comb and then gets it into the blade. The blade's moving back and forth and it cuts the hair. It's the same thing when you go to cut scissor over comb. So if I'm here and I've got my blade up against the bone of the comb and I'm cutting like this, I'm sliding the hair into the comb and once it hits the bone of the comb, I'm cutting it off. So I'm just working it up the head like that. So let's go into, so now I've got a little bit of a weight line right here from my clippering. So I wanna match up those two. You could do this with a clipper guard as well. I just like to fine tune things, scissor over comb, just works well for me. And I'm more familiar with my scissor. So I work up the head here and cut. So right here, I lift the hair, but look, my comb, as I come up, is coming straight up towards the ceiling. So parallel with the wall. Again, starting point of the head and then letting the head shape move away on its own and then letting that weight build up naturally. So just right here, comb goes straight up into the air. Cutting, comb goes straight up into the air. Now I'm gonna start to shift. So the ear becomes my pivot. see that weight line how it starts to go through and then it dips a little bit and then it comes back up I want to even out that weight line uh, throughout the side of the head so keep my comb at an angle you can see the guide underneath when I come in sink feeling good yeah feeling good all right, so now I'm gonna let down the top and I'm gonna wet down the hair. Okay, so we got the hair all combed out. So now I've got my tri razor. The hair is combed down. What I wanna do is start creating this kind of shaggy top. So I'm gonna build everything off of one point. So let's go here. All right, so now here's our calic area. So I'm gonna kind of build everything off of that. And by everything, I mean kind of the sectioning that I'm gonna take. Comb this out, split this here. This hair is gonna kind of fall in the back. Same thing here. So really what I wanna do is separate front and the back at that calic area. That calic is usually where that hair wants to kind of spill over the back and then push into the front. So we'll go just like this. So now I can decide what do I wanna do with this back portion of the haircut? I actually wanna just connect this back portion into the rest of the cut that happened back here. So easy way to do that. It's another reason why I wanted to build up some weight with that clipper work and the scissor over comb work. So now I'm gonna go in, I've got my 100% cutting side, and I'm just gonna work kind of a, a light push with the razor. You don't wanna shove the razor into the hair. It'll cut the hair right off. I want it to be nice and soft. So I just softly let this hair kind of start to bevel here in the back, and you can see how it starts to push, slight bit of disconnection, but still has that kind of, not uh, like volume in the back. All right, so now we're gonna move into the front, and I'm gonna build everything in the front off of this disconnect that's happening right here. So now I'm gonna take from the center, diagonal, almost like pie-shaped sections, and I'm gonna comb everything over to the side so I can visually see exactly how I wanna cut this. this comb the hair towards me. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start to cut. And I really wanna give myself a little bit of freedom as I'm cutting through this shape. So now we've got our disconnects starting to happen. I'm gonna work through the top. We've got our pivot point, which is right here. And now I'm gonna take another pie shape section around and everything's gonna come back to that point again. So what is happening? as I over direct this hair to this same point and I cut it, it's gonna start building weight. Building weight is totally cool. And if this were thicker hair, if this were thicker, then I would be going in, cutting this with the 100% cutting side, and then I would flip. And depending on how much weight they have in their hair, I would go texture 25 or I would go texture 50. So it would just depend. And I would take that same section that I just cut 
and I would run and I'm just going to do this because I want to show you guys visually, but this is finer hair. So I wouldn't do this on my guest. I would just keep the line as is, but I'm going to take 25% and go mid shaft to ends and just pop it. And it removes 25% of the hair just like that. Super simple, makes it nice and lightweight. So now keep pivoting. So we're basically at a vertical parting here. Now I'm going to pivot even more. And this will be the last one. Once I cross center, I'm going to cross the face and again, go 100. Now we're not getting our ultimate length in the front. This is just pushing the weight towards the front. I'm going to remove weight to then get it to hug the eyebrow. So I'm going to recut into this to do that. But sometimes you want to push weight towards the front so that you have weight to mess around with later on. You can see how it's really uh, starting to build up. It's got a really cool disconnection to it. I do the same thing on the opposite side here, which is pie shaped sections from that center point in the top. thing that we're missing is the fact that this length here needs to come back towards the face. So how do you get a line to then kind of come back towards the face and also kind of scoop in? It's more of like a curtain fringe type technique, which is very simple to cut. So I'm going to go here, bring this hair forward, knowing that I kind of want this disconnection on both sides. So this is where the freedom of the razor tool comes in. I want, again, this disconnection kind of that comes on the sides. So it's really just this center point that I want to remove that length from. So what I'll do is I take away a section about as thick as the tri razor, comb it back out and now pinch this entire section together. And now I take my 100% cutting side and I just work a quick little line. Now pinching the hair together, what does that do? If I pinch it all here, it's over directing the sides to the center. And then that allows some over direction and length to be built towards the outside. So now when we take a look at this cut, we start to see how it starts to kind of fan out a little bit in our length. The shortest point is in that center and then it gets a little bit longer towards the outsides. I don't want to cut into these outside pieces yet because I want to blow it dry and I want to kind of get a feel for where we're at. I'm not going to use too much of a brush in this blow dry to get our end result, but you can see just kind of how cool that texture is playing in to this haircut. Would thin wavy hair have a chance with this cut? Actually, Sally, thin wavy hair would be great for this haircut. So I wouldn't feel too crazy about it. Now, remember, I talked about using the texture sides and all that might be a little extreme, but all that over direction to the sides is actually very beneficial for, for wavier, uh, thinner hair. These are long. I'm going to cut those in a minute. I want to start blow drying. Product choice today, we're going to go with Paul Mitchell Soft Style Fast Form. hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel. I got new videos like this coming out all of the time. Also do me a big favor and hit that share button. If you could, I would really appreciate it. And also the last thing, if you're looking to upgrade your professional tools, then check out our online store, shopfse.com. You can pick up the scissors, combs, clips, our brand new tri razor. All of these tools are available on our online store. It's the best way to support us. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks.